Paper House followers. Today we're playing with resin again. Um, we are going to be creating these agate coasters. So to do that, we're going to, I'm going to show off a few things that you're going to need. So I'm using the agate coaster mold from Color Pour. It comes with two of them. So you have the two of those. And then I'm going to be using this opaque dye from them. So it's got a really beautiful colors. Let's get these out. So these are some really beautiful colors. So it's going to have a mauve, a dream, a nice copper, and then a brown burgundy. And I'm going to be using all four. So just to kind of get ready, I'm going to twist these open. I have already used these. So um, when they're brand new, they're going to have a closed top. So you want to take scissors and just snip all of those open. So I'm just going to twist these open and get them ready for their little color cups. And then another thing that I am using today is going to be these foiling flakes from Color Pour as well. It comes with two gold, a copper, and a silver. These are really fun. So I do go ahead and prep these as well. So I kind of pull them all into these little tiny pieces. Otherwise, you're going to have resin all over your hands and it's going to come out in a big clump like this and it's going to be very difficult to work with with all that resin on your hands. And then for most of my tools, I'm going to be using the Color Pour Toolkit. So there's 31 pieces. So it comes with 10 of these little plastic, basically Dixie cups. I love these because they're reusable and I use them for multiple projects before they are done. They do come with these pipettes. So if you're doing some finer work, these are really nice to have. We aren't going to be using those today, however. There's also 10 little stir sticks. So that's going to be for our little Dixie cups so that we can mix all of our colors in. It comes with some tweezers. Comes with two pairs of plastic gloves. And then you're also going to have a plastic sheet to cover your work surface. So for your work surface, you want to make sure you are in a well ventilated area. You want to make sure it is flat and even. Otherwise, your mold will be tilted and all your resin will be pouring to that lower side. Um, and then again, you want to have your hair up so you're not getting any of that sticky resin. Now resin can be very strong smelling. So I do suggest wearing a mask, especially when we're coming in with this heat gun, because we are going to use a heat gun to kind of move the resin a tad and pop all of the bubbles. And finally, we're going to be using the color port resin and hardener. This is food safe. So um, it's good for all your food, food safe projects as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, another thing I love having, um, and it's going to help make sure we get that resin equal parts since we're working with a two part, is I like these measuring cups from Envirotex. So they are eight ounces. They have the lines to help you get everything nice and centered. I did mark one for R for resin and one H for hardener. That way I don't get these ever mixed up. I can clean them with just a paper towel and some Lysol wipes afterwards and let them dry. And I can use these for multiple projects and I don't have to worry about getting new ones. And then I have a third cup. So as you can see, this one has been used plenty. And this is what I'm going to be using to mix it, both the resin and hardener in. And then for those, I do have three different popsicle sticks and I use the three different popsicle sticks for each of them. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we're going to start by getting equal parts of that resin and hardener. One thing to point out about this resin and resin hardener bottles from Color Pour is they do have a black cap for that resin harder, hardener and that white cap for that resin. If you end up having anything extra or maybe the larger bottles, you want to make sure you know which one goes to which 
because if you put this cap on the resin, it's going to end up curing and you're not going to be able to open it up again. So let's go ahead and get these open. I'm not going to be using the little squeeze spout on this today, but I do like to point out sometimes their little tops do get stuck in here. So you want to make sure you pop that out if you are using it. And then they also have a foil seal on it. So I like to take my popsicle stick that matches up with my hardener and just push that foil back. If I can, I like to pull it out. And then it will be ready to go. And then again, do the same thing with the resin. Just kind of push it in there. And if I can, I try to pull it out. If not, then I'd leave it. Now, I am going to be putting three and three quarters ounces of resin and hardener into each cup. So here, you want to go ahead and pour them into their separate cups and make sure you have equal parts. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, so now I have those equal parts, and I'm gonna go ahead and put it all into my third cup that doesn't have any initials on it. So, I just wanna pour it all in there, scrape out every little bit that I can. That's just scraping with my popsicle stick. I want to scrape the bottom of it, getting all of it out. That way we're still keeping it at equal parts. All right, so I think I got all of it there. Now I'm going to come in with that resin. Just get everything in there. All right. Again, just scraping that cup, the bottom, the sides. Now, if it's too cold, your resin, it might need to be put into a warm bath. Um, you'll just have to kind of read the instructions, see what's best. Everybody's houses are different temperatures, um, especially if you're in the Northwest, it might be a little chilly. All right, so I think I got everything there. And now we're going to go ahead and mix this. So when you mix, you want to scrape the sides and the bottom and you want to go nice and slow. And you're going to go and do this for about four minutes. It'll kind of get a little milky or kind of discolored on you. And then it'll finally kind of start to clear up. So the slower you go, the less air bubbles you'll have as well. I tend to stir mine too fast. So we're going to have lots of bubbles that we'll have to pop at the end. I'm gonna go ahead and stir this off camera and then we'll come back after four minutes. All right, you guys, it has been four minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring out our five cups here. Oops. And we're gonna go ahead and separate out the resin. So these first top two are gonna be for that burgundy and copper. And I'm not going to be using very much of it, so I want to make sure I'm not putting too much into my cup. Probably about, I don't know if you can see how much that is. It kind of comes up to the little line that's on the cup. We will end up having a, keeping a little bit of clear in our big cup here. So don't feel too pressured to not have enough of one color. So I'm going to fill these two cups 
almost three quarters of the way. And then I'm going to fill this one about halfway. And that's going to be our clear that has the copper flakes in. I'm going to come in with that burgundy and just drop about six drops. And then we're going to do the same thing with this copper. I think I'm going to go ahead and do eight with that one. And then for these, I'm going to go ahead and come in with that dream color and put about 12 drops. And then the same with the mauve. And then for this final one, I'm going to come in with my copper flakes. And I'm just going to dump those right in there. I might have a little bit left over, but that's okay because I can use that to kind of place where I want them to go when we start pouring. And now I'm just going to go ahead and stir all these. I want to make sure I scrape the bottom, get the resin off the bottom and all the sides. Making sure everything is colored and nicely mixed. This is especially important, I find, when I have any pigment powders because if you don't get these nicely mixed you're gonna end up having little chunks of it which isn't always the prettiest I love this copper it's so pretty now this kind of milky dream color we're gonna go ahead and mix it all the way to the bottom getting all my sides, making sure it's gonna be a beautiful color when we get this poured. Now we're gonna come in with that mauve. Again, just mixing. Mixing all the color to the bottom as thorough as we can. All right, now this last one is the flakes, and I'm just gonna basically submerge them a little bit into, I'm just gonna kinda get them all submerged in there in that resin. I do wanna make sure I get some on the bottom because I don't wanna be pouring at the very end and have no flakes um, at the end. So I'm just gonna set these to the side. And we're gonna place our molds. So I am gonna do one mold at a time. And we're gonna start with that dark brown burgundy color. So I'm gonna separate these just a little bit more. And I'm just gonna go right along the edge. And I'm gonna pour most of it out. Okay, so now I'm gonna come in with that dream color. Get a good pour there. And then I'm gonna come in with that mauve. And then I'm gonna come in with that clear copper flakes here. All right. That is looking good, you guys. So that's my first initial pour. I do here like to go and pop the bubbles with my heat gun. I don't know if you guys can see those bubbles popping on camera, but there's a lot of little bubbles because again, I mix very quickly and then I'm gonna go ahead and start on this guy over here and here I'm gonna start with that copper color all the way across and then I'm gonna come in with that 
mauve. And then I'll come in with that dream. And then I'm gonna come in with that clear. And I try to work quick enough on getting these in here that there's part of the mold still visible at the bottom. That way I know the clear is also gonna be showing on the other side. So let's go ahead and pour a little bit more of this dream color in here. And then we're gonna finish it over here. And then I wanna put a little bit more clear with those flakes. We might go ahead and add a few more flakes into this one. Come in with that mauve. All the way across. So these are gonna have two different looks, very similar, but two different looks. And when you are adding the resin, you want to make sure that it's going to be filled all the way to the top. If we have any gaps from this, from the lip, you might end up with a little bit more rough edges than you were planning to have. And I wouldn't want that. Okay. Again, I'm going to come in with that heat gun, just pop in those bubbles. I don't want to keep my heat gun in one spot for too long because it will overheat the resin. So I just kind of do little circular movements all the way across. Just kind of hitting all the spots. Also, when I come in with this heat gun, if I kind of want to blend these colors in a little bit more, I can kind of take my heat gun and kind of shake it and that's what I call, do a little zhuzh, and it'll kind of blend the colors up into each other. Now, one thing I always like to point out to people, resin is fluid. So just like paint pouring, it's going to move. It's going to move a little bit while it dries. It's going to adjust. So you might love the way something looks, and at the end, it's going to look completely different. So don't give up on it. Keep staying positive. I'm gonna go ahead, I have some of that clear left. I'm gonna pour a little bit more into this mauve color and then this dream color. We're gonna add a little bit more. Finishing off all of our resin. And on these, I'll probably just put a few drops, like four drops of color. So I'm gonna come back in with this color here on both sides. And then we'll come in with some of this mauve on both sides as well. I do have a little bit more clear, so I could come in with that clear with those gold flakes if I felt it was needed. I am gonna go and use my tweezers now. I'm gonna place some of these gold flakes. This is where I said it's really hard if you have resin on your hands and you're trying to chop this all up. That's why I kind of do it beforehand so I can easily grab it and place things or move it if it's already in there. I wanna make sure if I'm putting these in here that I'm getting it covered and down in the resin. Otherwise, you will have it a rough edge. A few more pieces, gonna get those in there. And then a few over here. All right, and then I'm just gonna hit it with that heat gun one last time. Just pop in those bubbles. And then I will end up coming back in about 15 minutes, 10 minutes, and just hitting this with the heat again because more bubbles will end up coming to the top layer 
And I want to make sure that I'm getting anything pop that is showing up because I wouldn't want to see any bubble in my final pieces. Okay, you guys, while you let these dry, um, I am I leave mine in the same spot that I work because I know that I'm not going to have any animals or any dust able to get into it. But you, any of your extra that you have, any of your cups that had resin, I like to place whatever stir stick I had down and then just plop the cup, cup right on top of it. So when I do that, all the resin is going to fall to the bottom. And then when it's fully dry, I can just pull this stick and it'll all come out. And it will be very little cleanup that I have to do. And then for your resin and your hardener cups, I just take a paper towel. I want to wipe off anything that I can. And then I come in with a Clorox wipe, wipe it, and then I come back in with a paper towel and just clean it. That way I can reuse these and I don't get anything gross left over in it. And then for my resin, the one that I mix, both the resin and hardener, I flip over just like all my little cups. And then you'll be able to reuse all these and have an, an easy cleanup. All right, you guys, we're gonna go ahead and let this dry for about 24 hours and then we will be back. All right, you guys, so our it's been 24 hours and we're gonna pull these out of its molds. This is my most excited part because when we flip these over, you're going to see that it's not going to quite look how you might have expected when you're looking at this backside here. I don't know if you can see the couple spots where I have that extra resin coming off, but I like to just come in with some like of my wire cutters that are going to be flush and just cut right up against it. And sometimes they will just, you can take your fingernail and just flick them off. Just going to depend. All right. Now you can already see that the color has moved on these. And now we're going to flip it over and see what the other side looks like. Oh my gosh. You guys, I am in love. Look at how fun those are. I love that we ended up doing the two colors just to show how these colors can really play well off of each other and look beautiful. You can see why I was talking about making sure there was a part of the mold showing on the corners because on this final pour, if I didn't have any mold showing, all that um, gold leafing would end up being behind the next color and I might not be able to see, you know, the fun, beautiful copper flakes since they would be in that opaque color but you guys i'm in love with these they are so cute i have my other two that i did make earlier and they're with the gold but how fun would this even be if they were all matching i could put them on like a little wood um panel and make a decor piece out of it too it doesn't necessarily be coasters um i could also make do another pour and make a four set of coasters. I would just, I think that would be a great gift. Um, again, if I did that, I probably would have these all matching in color, but just really fun. I love how unique these are and you could really use any color on them and it'd look fantastic. All right, you guys, thank you for joining me and happy crafting. Mm -hmm.